following video, presented by Earthkeeper, is intended to teach enthusiasts of five vogel crystals how to clear, activate, care for, and effectively use five vogel crystals. Included are teachings from James Tiberon, Dr. Marcel Vogel, and John Orkham. Enjoy and Namaste. The following is a brief insertion from James Tiburon. Much of the processes described were Metatron guided and inspired. Other portions were learned directly by the author through experiences of working with crystals for over 40 years. James Tiburon is a geologist and gemologist and crystal expert and intuitive. About Phi Crystals, written by James Tiburon. Caring for Phi Vogels. Treat your five vogel with great attention and care. Do's and don'ts. One, do spend time with your phi crystal. In order to activate it, you must insert your love and energy into the crystal. Two, never touch the front forward tip. It is very fragile. Quartz has a very high fracture gradient and cleavage potential. Three, do not place or immerse your Phi crystal in water to clear it. If the water is of a significantly different temperature than the crystal, either colder or warmer, it can cause either rapid contraction or expansion of the quartz and result in fissure cracking, creating inclusions. 4. Do not clear Phi crystals with salt or salt water. 5. Do not use crystal bowls or Tibetan bowls near the quartz. The high-pitched sounds can induce cracking. 6. The best way to clear the Phi crystal is by soul breathing. Hold the crystal firmly. Shake it vigorously. Take a deep breath and blow energetically onto the crystal three times with the intent of clearing. 7. Optionally, the Phi crystal can be cleared by smudging with white sage. Circle the crystal three times with the sage smoke. 8. As with all personal crystals, be very discerning of allowing others to handle them. You may wish to reserve use of the Phi crystal for yourself only. Anytime another touches it, their energy can be absorbed onto the crystal. Phi crystal activation process. Initially stroke the crystal with the fingers and upshift your vibration with the infinity breath for about five minutes. Infinity breathing is done by an inhalation of eight counts and an exhalation with eight counts, with both inhale and exhale all through the nasal passage. After five minutes, then vocally tone the OM sound. As you tone, visually open every chakra beginning with the crown down to the root and then back up to the heart. It is important to be in a higher state when working with five ogles. Send love directly from the heart chakra and visualize it filling the crystal with emerald green light. Ask the crystal to acknowledge you and sense the response. My trigger is usually a warming of the crystal. It will feel warm in my hands. When I am working with a new five ogle, and I have a set of 12, the warming can initially take up to 30 minutes or more. Once I am merged into the third meld with the crystal, it takes only a few minutes, sometimes just seconds. The second trigger that the crystal is ready is usually as an energy pulse from the crystal that you will recognize as an energy dynamic, or it may feel as a tingling sensation running up the arm into the spine and heart or as simply a mental knowing or deep intuitive sense or signal of understanding, a responsive flash to you from the sentience of the crystal. This will vary with each person. Spend at least three weeks doing this for a period of not less than 20 to 30 minutes per day or until the energy reaction is sent back to you and recognized. 
Visualize and build a field of green energy that encompasses your auric field. In my personal experience, I often see swirling geometric shapes with eyes closed when the phi crystal has triggered to the pineal to open. At this point, the experience can take one of several paths. The experience can be one of a visual soiree into past or future lives, one of encountering teachers, or one of specific tasks such as healing or creating a benevolent thought form. Creating Healing Thought Forms And so, as mentioned, the other color variances for me are usually defined by my use of the session meaning that if I am using one of my vowels to create a manifestation thought form, I will sort of consciously follow a procedure guided to me intuitively to form a golden bubble and place in that bubble a scripted message of a few words to initiate the imagery. For example, if I am focusing on offering a healing, I will see the words highest good, highest healing floating inside a golden sphere, bubble, then I will see the image of the person the healing is intended for inside the sphere. Then I send love and healing through my hands into the base of the crystal and visualize a beam of emerald green light going into the sphere. When it is visually full, which I imagine, then I send the bubble to the receiving party's heart chakra. I always make sure I have the other person's approval before sending this energy and that is important. I use five vogels for specific goals, being able to get creative energies for my books, channels, etc. When Anne and I led Earthkeeper pilgrimages, we worked together to visualize the goals and intent of the journey. I should also note, there are also sessions with five vogels that occur when I meditate that I do not consciously direct, and in these there is that trust that what is opening is for one's highest good led by spirit or higher self. These often take one on journeys to past lives or to other realities, into lucid dream states, or to master teachers. In these I see a totally different type of color, bright colors, and often a deep intense white light, as if going through a tunnel, and at times you may have to work at remaining lucid, as it's easy to lapse into a sleep state and have a dream that evaporates from conscious mind memory after waking. But by remaining focused, incredible visionary experiences, either glimpses of past, future lives, or interfacing with teachers can occur. I have met with my oversoul, Tiburon of the Pleiades, many times in this way, and also with the benevolent Syrians and Pleiadians, as well as Lord Ganesh. Tiburon of the Pleiades incarnated into Atlantis and worked with the Law of One Temple Crystals for long lifetimes, per the Metatron readings. And much knowledge on crystals is received directly from those lifetimes. It is why, per Metatron, I chose to be born in Arkansas with the quartz crystal fields, and then moved to Brazil after completing my studies at the University of Arkansas. I lived in Brazil for seven years. Arkansas and Brazil are the largest deposit of quartz crystal on the planet. It is interesting how different cuts of phi crystals seem to offer differing experiences in the undirected, more spontaneous visions. Keep in mind, these are my experiences and modalities, and these can and will differ somewhat for each diligent seeker. In all sincerity, Phi crystals are remarkable tools of thought amplification and interdimensional access. The great Edgar Cayce provided an interesting series of readings regarding the quartz crystals of the Law of One in Atlantis. The Cayce reading states clearly that the crystals were used to communicate with the infinite, with masters from outside our universe. May you be blessed. Namaste. James Tiburon Because Edgar Casey
I don't think if I had read about Jim's from any other source than Edgar Casey, I would have necessarily believed it. But his life was so demarked by integrity that, okay. and his readings were so remarkably accurate that it gives you that understanding of the veracity. Several people were mentioned to me earlier that this felt like a really wonderful energy. According to the Metatronic readings, Arkansas was an Atlantean colony. Brazil was an Atlantean colony. John does a presentation on Atlantis where he talks about the Iroquois Indians being Atlantean and their language being Atlantean. So let's have an Earthkeeper round of applause for the remarkable and amazing John Van Auken. Okay, first uh, on discussing crystals, I would like us to have an understanding of uh, the effects in the forming of a crystal. Prior to human incarnations of the morning stars, nature and the creative forces of the universe were shaping crystals in this planet. And so those crystals have the ideal essence of the creation. But subsequent to that, human beings can affect crystals, like our present here right now is affecting the crystals in Arkansas that are, that are growing and coming, and crystals receive these vibes. Um, this is the crystallization of when they crystallize with certain vibes, certain words, certain thoughts, the crystals become very interesting and show the influence of thought, word, and vibration. Attitude, disposition, energy around its crystallizing. Here are the Vogel crystals and the idea that uh, a crystal in a certain shape can act as a wand. And as you can see, this is the feminine end and energy or light can come in and, and light is energy in a certain form and exits through the masculine end and can be directed like a wand. Here you see the setup and the angles of these degrees are very important and you know Tib has talked about 51 degrees, uh, 51 minutes exact same slope of the Great Pyramid. Then you have a sharper uh, angle here as it's coming out. Uh, here's T Tib's uh, diagram of this, showing the phi energy here. Uh, this uh, symbol is considered the golden ratio. And the golden ratio, also known as the golden proportion, golden mean, golden section, golden number, divine proportion, or Sectio Divina. Uh, the ancient Pythagoreans, who defined numbers as an expression of ratios, not as units used commonly today, believed that reality is numerical and that the golden ratio expressed an underlying truth about existence. So if that's true, this crystals may actually be a very powerful healing device. And Vogel actually used it that way, directing it towards spiritual centers in the body, certain organs in the body, using it as a wand in which the energy would go through. Here's a six-sided crystal ready to be cut. Here are some right here with these diagrams showing how you would prepare such a beautiful, uh, magnificent wand. Crystals for channeling energy flow. Edgar Casey actually gives a reading for Mr. Hastings, um, who was one of the key Atlantean crystal workers, and I think Tib was too. But, uh, but anyway.
Marcel Vogel speaking. I'm going to talk to you now on how to tune the crystal, charge it, clear it, and prepare oneself for the basic operations that are used in the therapeutic practices that we use with these crystals. The crystal I have in my hand now is a four-sided double terminated crystal designed for healing purposes. This is the first crystal I designed and we've gone on now to the six, the seven, and the eight-sided crystal. The increase in number of sides here increase the volume of energy that a crystal will hold, it is like having a 4 volt, 6 volt, and 8 volt battery. The same function takes place in the crystal except that there is an increase in charge and power. There are two ends to the crystal. One end, the lower end here, has a pyramid type angle. This other end is designed to release the charge that is coming from the tip of the crystal. Input here and output or release here. It is truly diode in nature in the sense that this then would be looked on as positive this side as negative. If one focuses with the crystal in this way onto diamagnetic material like graphite, this will repel, this other side will attract. Now the first step that one goes through is to clear the crystal from previous vibrations or just in storage the vibrations are accreted onto the crystal. That is done by holding in one's hand this way between the thumb and the index finger. Between each two tips, one takes then the other two fingers, places them on two of the faces, draw one's breath in, and let the breath out through the nostrils, and goes on to the other pair of faces and releases. This is true now for the four-sided crystal. If one has then a higher number of faces, as we have here on the six-sided crystal, one does it for all three pairs. The crystal is clear. One can measure this clarity with instrumentation that we have here in the laboratory and we get now only the fundamental vibration of the crystal which is 454. The next phase is to take the crystal in one's hand and roll it. It's like a stator in a magnet motor and when one rotates the stator one induces a charge in the crystal. One should rotate the crystal with the operating tip facing up and the smaller angle facing downward and one just rotates and the rotation is clockwise to the right. How many turns? Until you feel the crystal becoming sticky in your hand, meaning that as you rub it with your fingers, it takes on an increase in friction or stickiness. One then stops when one feels that, draw one's breath in, with the crystal held in this position 
and releases the breath through the nostrils. When that is done, to those who are sensitive, one will feel a pulsation between this finger and this finger. It feels like the beat of a heart. This does not happen to everyone. But all of you can feel the following. Is after you have charged the crystal, you take your index finger, you place it on the crystal, draw your breath in, and release your breath, and you find that you've stuck your finger to the crystal. Draw your breath in as you look at it, and the finger becomes free and starts to move freely. Let your breath out as you look at the crystal, and it sticks. Draw the breath in, because here now with focusing one's mind, one draws the charge out with breath and releases the charge with the outgoing breath. When one detaches from one's intention and focus, that does not happen. The crystal operates of its own, oscillates, and one then can work with the charge through one's finger. I repeat this carefully. When one focuses one's attention onto the crystal, one can draw then with intention, with the indwelling breath, the charge out from the crystal, and the outgoing breath, you apply the charge. We will come to this again and again throughout the healing procedure. It is in breathing with intention that you build the charge and create the patterns that are necessary to release, balance, and heal the body of an individual. This finger here can be looked on now as a shutter control. Movement of this finger back and forth will cause this field to broaden or narrow. As one moves the finger down, the field gets lower, bring it back, it becomes broader. One can use the finger, this one, also as a sensor. We will come to this as one locks into the body of a person, and one waits then in holding, one will feel a vibration here and move the finger when it locks, one knows that a charge is flowing freely through the body, into the hand, and closing a circuit again. So it has a dual function. One, controlling the volume of charge. Second, a sensor for the charge that is flowing or not flowing. These two fingers act as governors of the energy that one wishes to release or draw from the person. As one draws one breath in, one squeezes onto the crystal, one feels one's body perspire, <coughs> and one releases the outgoing breath. There's a jerking action. These fingers convulse and create then in the crystal an additional charge. This crystal, quartz, silicon dioxide, has a quality of piezoelectricity. This means that when you squeeze the crystal, the pressure is converted into an EMF or electrical charge. If you apply an electrical charge between these two plates like this, these two parallel surfaces, a vibration or sound is produced. 
So it converts pressure into electricity or EMF, or you can apply an EMF and it is converted into a vibration or sound. We're dealing with both of these modalities when one works with the crystal. This covers now the clearing and charging phase of the crystal and I will repeat this now before closing the first part. To clear a crystal, one holds it in one's hand this way and here, breathes through the nostril second time. What is going on in one's mind is the thought or intention of clearing. It is your intention that produces the result. Phase two, you charge the crystal by first rolling until you feel a slight stickiness. Then you draw your breath in, create an image of the crystal in one's mind, and release the breath with the eyes closed. That completes phase one. scientific to basis to healing with prayer and crystals? Our final guest tonight believes he can prove it. Dr. Marcel Vogel is recognized as one of the most authoritative researchers into the therapeutic use of quartz crystals. For 27 years, he was a senior research scientist and one of the most prolific inventors at IBM, scientist Dr. Marcel Vogel. Good evening, Marcel. Good evening to you and hi. Hello. How are you? How did you get involved in research with crystals? <laughs> it's a rather strange. I've been into crystals all of my life, first of all. I've grown crystals in the furnace, in the laboratory. But the handling of quartz for their therapy and the unusual properties, which we're going to be talking on now, started in 1973. And I gave a talk at the Church of Religious Science. And a minister there heard me talk, and she called me the next day, and she said, I feel impelled. I want to send you a crystal, a quartz crystal. I am a stockholder in this quartz crystal mine in Ontario, Canada. And this crystal is unusual because when you hold it in your hand, I find that it will vibrate or oscillate in your hand. And I had about a zero interest in doing anything along this line. And she was very insistent that she send it to me. And I said, if you want, send it to me. So in the mail came the crystal. And uh, next to me at the time I received it was a young man by the name of Chuck McNosa, who I had hired as my assistant, a very sensitive young man. And I took the crystal in my hands, and I drew my breath in. <clears throat> and as I released my breath, sure enough, I felt this vibration or pulsation in the crystal. I said, uh-huh, that's interesting. Now, what is this vibration? And I took then the crystal and pointed it at the face of Chuck McNosa and just pulsed my breath. When I did that, his head went back, and he went into an altered state of consciousness. Uh, in fact, we went to the Pyramid of Cheops. We went to different parts of the country. We did traveling together. And this was done. I put the crystal aside and forgot about it. I had so many other things going in the laboratory at the time I just developed the um, new types of phosphors, your rare earth phosphors, yttrium venedic europium and europium tungstate. And so my mind was occupied with a million other things. And this is back, you said, in 1970 what? 74. 1974. 73 and 74. Okay. So it's not too many years ago. Dr. Uh, Vogel, what? I was going to ask you, what are crystals? Pardon me? What are crystals, Dr. Vogel? Crystals are 
a single or multiple unit cells of a particular species, like, for example, quartz now is silicon dioxide, SiO2. It assembles in space as what we call a unit cell. This unit cell, then this accretes together to form a single crystal. So each one of these unit cells orderly and regularly associate together and form then a single crystal. That is called then a single crystal. You will have polycrystals, which there will be jumbled masses of little tiny dendritic forms of crystals. These are called polycrystals. In your psychic research newsletter, you talk about the fact that we actually have crystals in our body. Will you explain yes. this? Now, when I speak of that, I'm speaking of the structures that are in the cellular membranes, our lyotropic mesophases. These are liquid crystal membranes. And these membranes are controlled by the very weak electrical fields and also very sensitive to patterns of thought. And, and they will change in electrical conductivity, they will change in surface resistivity. And this is the outer membrane of the, each individual cell in our body. Mm -hmm. I have studied this extensively in my own laboratory. I have a rather large microscope, about a quarter million dollar optical microscope. Is this liquid crystal membrane something that's acknowledged by current scientific Oh community? yes, it's published. I've got hundreds of papers on this. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. Then what do you mean when you say that the Earth is a crystal? Well, the Earth also acts as a single membrane in the sense that it is vibrating, creating a field in space. And that field coheres in space, and that coherent field takes on the characteristics of a crystallographic formation. See, yeah. once energy starts to cohere together, it takes on the property of matter. The transition from energy into matter. What I have ended up in, in the intensive studies that I have done now, is I feel that we are making quantum transducers for the mind. I'm making... Hello. <laughs> and what I mean by that is that when you hold a crystal in your hand, you're storing information, not electrical or magnetic fields, but information, and that information then can be locked into a crystal, and it can be then processed. Now, I've proven this point many thousands of times by putting a program in with my mind. I do that, and once I take the program out with my mind, so the primary controller is the mentation the program that you imprint with your mind. So this is the first step to building mind computers. Uh -huh. So you see how big this is. Yes. Well, what can we use crystals for, Dr. Vogel? Well, I'm giving you one for opening up a whole new areas and fields of chemistry and uh, in the purification of water. What I have done now in therapeutics is to relieve, to re blockages in the human body, imprinting of patterns where people have suffered stress, shock. Uh, if you'd have the copy of the last issue from the experiences in Australia, I'll give you an example. A man came to me who had been bitten by a poisonous insect. He was still in shock. The doctors wanted to amputate his leg. He was that toxic. Is he refused to have his leg amputated. He came to me, and I treated him once with the crystal to release the toxin from his body, from the insect bite. The whole auditorium, there was about four, 300 people in the auditorium, 
filled with the odor of formic acid. His body shook. And suddenly his whole skin, texture, and everything cleared up. The doctors took his blood pressure before and after the blood pressure dropped radically. Next morning, the doctors took his blood pressure. The following day, it had dropped even further. His total body stabilized. All pain left his limbs, and he was perfectly normal. All from the use of a crystal. One treatment with a crystal. Unbelievable. That was witnessed by over 200 people. Well, a lot of people, as you know, currently are infatuated, might be a good word, with quartz crystals. How do you charge a crystal? There's so much misinformation well, out there. I'm sorry about that, and it's very, very simple. It's the, in it's the intention of the operator. It's the intention of the operator. I've demonstrated this again and again. To charge a crystal, you hold it in your hand, you take a deep breath, put your thoughts in, and release your breath, and it's charged. Clean the crystal, you hold it in your hand, and you visualize emptying the charge and releasing all of the unwanted programs, pulsing your breath, and it's clean. Yeah. And I, I have scientific equipment that I've measured these things, Omega-5 and spectrophotometers, and I can verify all of these operations by secondary backup work that I've done in pH, spectrophotometry, and all of the secondary scientific measurements. Well, I think that the information you've just given us is so important because there are so many books out there that tell you use salt water and put no, it in no. the sun and, and heat it up and right. pull it down. Let's, can we move on to the Bavarian experiment with prayer? It is yes, so it, significant. That is so wonderful because what we had there were 34 people uh, up in the Alps, Bavarian Alps, and the majority of them had their own crystal. And they had a Roman Catholic priest with us, and he was just a delightful person. He had a guitar, and we sat at nighttime, and we played the guitar together. And with us was a physicist, a medical doctor, and I had my Omega-5 to measure the forces that were in the crystal and in the water. So we put a jug of water on the altar, and we measured the field that was present in each person's crystal. Now we had the crystals that were cut by us and we had about a half a dozen crystals that were natural crystals that people got like Herkimer diamonds and other naturally terminated crystals. Do you follow? Yes. So sure. we measured these and we recorded these results on day one after the mass, day two, day three, and day four. We measured both the crystal and the water that was on the altar. On day one, it was about 10 to the third power. In other words, numbers with three digits. The same thing true with the water. <clears throat> the second day was about 10 to the fifth digits, five digits. Dr. Vogel, I'll have to pause in just a few seconds. We'll be back after a three. Dr. Marcel Vogel, would you please? Are you ready? Yes, we're ready now. All righty. We did the measurements with three people, a physicist, a medical doctor, and myself, and we all got exactly the same readings. On the, after the second day, we got no further readings from either the Herkimer diamonds or the natural crystals. They did not charge. The third, fourth, third, and fourth day, they crept up, and finally when we got to the fourth day, it went up to 10 to the 34th power. Oh, my. Four times 10 to the 34th power, five, four. I took a sample of that water with me home, and one year later, measured that water, and it was exactly the same reading that we had when we did it a year ago in Germany. One year later. One year later. Mm -hmm. Now, we did a spectrophotometric analysis of that in the ultraviolet. The curve went off of the graph. We had the highest response from any sample of water as far as the uh, ultraviolet spectrophotometry. 
the energy in that region was the highest that we've recorded from any uh, known source. Can you explain that a little bit more for those? Yes, I, I can now. We have, we're really having to devote our life to this because this is absolutely virgin areas of research. We are dealing with storage phenomena of forces which are not in the electromagnetic area of the spectrum. Call it whatever you want, tachyons or whatever you want to give them a name. But when these forces come to a certain level, they become critical and they start to jump to a very, very high level between the third and the fourth day. It went from 10 to the 5th to 10 to the 34th. I encounter exactly the same thing in my studies of one time around, two times around the coil, around the crystal, testing three, four. When I get to the fourth pass, I come to a peak. So I take that reading, that value, put that information into the crystal. And now that information will structure again and again on infinitum. Mm -hmm. Now, I took drops of this water, put it in <laughs> uh, triple distilled water, and <clears throat> I got a reduced reading, but I still got a tremendously amplified reading by just one drop in 100 cc's. Dr. Vogel, I'm sorry to break in one more time. I was, I was wondering, do you think that um, rocks really have the power to heal? Hello? Hello? Go ahead. A little bit loud. Your okay. voice is very faint. Do you actually think that rocks have the power to heal? Could what? To heal? She wants to know if rocks have the power to heal, Dr. Vogel. To heal with your mind and your love. What really heals is the love that's in your heart. Mm-hmm. See, what I do when I charge a crystal, I put the thought of love and well-being. I say a prayer. Dear Lord, let me be of service to this person. Not my will, but thine. And when I do that, I, was, I separate my own will. So the crystal itself is an instrument. Okay. I agree with you. Okay. I do. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. You have won a copy of Psychic Research Newsletter and a crystal. And friends, in the future, we are going to give out more crystals and Psychic Research Newsletters over the next couple of months. Good. Okay, Dr. Vogel, we have a break that's coming up in about a minute and a half, after which we will have 11 whole minutes for you, we for us to talk uninterruptedly, and that's that's a great boon here. Oh, uh, that's going to be perfect. Really. Yeah, so. so why don't we spend a little bit of this last minute then talking a little bit more about the power of love and what you started to tell our call. Yeah, what, I, what it, it's really fulfilling what Christ gave us 2,000 years ago. He said, if you wish to love me, love your fellow man. And the whole principle of healing that Christ did was loving. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we've called them miracles, but he said, all of these things I have done, you can do in like manner. Mm -hmm. And I've tried them out, and I find, yes, I can help people who are deaf to hear and blind to see. I've got video records of all of these things accomplished. I've got about 300 videotapes that I've made. And Dr. Vogel is combining his lifetime study of energy conversion and crystalline coating systems, magnetism, phosphor technology, and optical microscopy with a study of the energies of mind and spirit. It is his intent to quantify and identify these energies and to apply them to Psychic Research Incorporated's current projects of purifying water, aging wine, for which Dr. Vogel has a patent and what we've talked about this evening, and the therapeutic application of crystals and crystal devices. Along those lines, Dr. Vogel, yes. you mentioned in your recent newsletter, Psychic Research Newsletter, mm -hmm. um, some work with the smoky quartz crystals and getting rid of residual radiation. Yes. Would um, you talk about this? Yes, I'd like to. We, we did the following. We took smoky quartz and exposed it to x-ray, and uh, we then took and spun the uh, water around the crystal that we had exposed to x-ray and put the water onto photographic Polaroid film against a control. 
Now, the Polaroid film developed and formed a perfect imprint or image of the uh, base of the water from the radiation that came from the crystal. Now, we found a means of stripping this radiation by exposing it then to red light. And when we did that, there was no radiation left in the crystal, and it was gone. So what this gave me as a indicator that a person who had been exposed to radiation, such as x-rays, who had been, you know, having x-rays of the teeth or chest x-rays, they could wear a smoky quartz and then take the smoky quartz and give it exposure to the red light and then put it back on their body and wear it again. Now, this is preliminary, and I, I have a validation from the photographic evidence that there was radiation transferred to the water. Mm -hmm. Now, we got a sensitive Geiger counter, and I was able to measure the uh, a radiation charge with the Geiger counter on the smoky quartz. And when I cleared it, it was gone. Now, this is an active research yet, but it does, it does store... And the principle is the following. Smoky quartz is a product of radiation. In other words, nature creates a defect in the lattice spacing of the silica in the silicon dioxide. It is thrown out of kilter, forming a F center or a farben center. That gives you the color of the smoky quartz. So it is produced by radiation, so it is logical that radiation will absorb in that region as well, and it does, and I find that to be true. Mm -hmm. well, There's a lot, lot more work yet to be done, but it's a first step towards a real practical dosimeter for a person to wear and take the radiation out of the body. Particularly for people undergoing chemotherapy and radiation you know, treatment. You know, all of this type of thing, yes. Yeah, that would be amazing. And wow. I, I'm publicly sharing it like I am with you because I don't want to patent it. I want to make it public knowledge and have it available for everyone to use. Mm -hmm. That is my intention. Well, while we're on the subject of radiation, what does underground nuclear testing do to the Earth? Makes a mess of it. Can you talk about that? Because you did talk about the Earth being a crystal, and now we... Well, we're throwing everything out of kilter. I, I feel very unhappy over it. I wish there are much better ways of creating energy, and we should take time to look on alternate forms of creating energy instead of nuclear power. Do you think that the nuclear testing has a lot to do with recent earthquakes around the planet? I can't answer that, dear. I'm not qualified from a scientific standpoint to give this type of opinion. Mm -hmm. I'd be remiss to do that for you. Mm -hmm. I, I can speak within my own scientific uh, expertise. When I go beyond that, I'd be, I'd be foolhardy. Well, you know what's nice, Marcel? What? We can always count on you for professional judgment. But by the way, I have finished the book now. It's taken me 14 years. And it'll be myself on crystals. It will be out this year by George, by Valentine. Oh, great. It'll be about a thousand pages. <laughs> 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 but it'll be about a hundred and fifty case histories. So there will be the first book with actual case histories with all different pub you know, professionals mm -hmm. uh, detailing how they've used the crystal, what they have found and what they have not found. Mm -hmm. And above all the follow up, what what has worked and what I've gone into carefully what areas it has not worked in. obviously. Oh, yeah. See, one of the key things I've found is when you treat with a crystal, you're removing a block. It's like pulling a plug on a dam. Mm -hmm. Well, after you do that, then the body has got to rebuild itself, and you've got to go into regular therapy to help a person to rebuild. Right. And you just don't expect, you're not, you're not performing miracles in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. And I think the point you made earlier is so important for people who work with crystals or who work in the healing profession to realize that they're, and, you know, that, that they're instruments for this divine cosmic energy called love. At least that's, that's how we experience it. That's what I call That's yeah. right. Well, let me ask you a question along these lines. Uh, you know, I have an interest in 21st century medicine along naturopathic lines and direct oh. to center. What do you see as the medicine of 21st century? A complete new set of flower essences. What do you mean by that? going to be making them in a cup in another this month to start in from australia can you explain this a little bit more oh yes we'll be making them with structured water you'll be having brand new forms of flowered essences with
structured water, and then we're going to go right into homeopathic materials. That was something I was going to ask you, because in your work, the, the circulation of water, the movement of the water, seems to be the key to holding the template of information. That is correct. Uh -huh. Giving you spin, you create a vortex. Mm -hmm. And that vortex, vortexing the fluid, is informational transfer. Mm -hmm. well, we're, Victor, not, yeah. we're not talking electromagnetic, we're talking informational transferring. Now, that spinning of a fluid, even if it's in a, a stainless steel coil, if you take a, a magnetometer, a very sensitive uh, magnetometer like I've had, I can measure magnetic moment in the coil up to by 0.07 Gauss. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the, the net from that spinning fluid is a magnetic field. Mm -hmm. But <coughs> the initial vortex is is not in the electromagnetic field. It's information. See, it's informational transfer. Well, the, one of the questions I had, and I we've asked this before, you know, most people think, well, you can just pick up a crystal that comes from some mine somewhere, oh, Brazil yeah. or whatever, and uh, it starts to work kind of like automatically. Oh, tell us no. what tell us what you do with crystals to make them work efficiently. <laughs> I get a raw crystal, and I got about a hundred thousand dollars worth of equipment bought, and a man that's taken five years of training to cut this crystal and finish it to the point where it is tuned like a laser. It is really a mined laser. So you cut away all of the dross until you have that thing down to the point where it becomes sensitive to your patterns of thought. Now, the discovery we made is the following. When I achieve this end, to my great joy and surprise, I get a number, 454, on the major reading I get on the crystal. When I measure water, I get exactly the same value for pure water, hmm. which is not contaminated. So the crystal and the water are tuned exactly to each other. Hmm. Now, when I take a raw crystal, put it in the same equipment I have and measure it, it gets down to a number like 75, 100, 125. It's nothing compared to the 454. Mm -hmm. So yep. it's getting that precise, numerical value, repeatable. Every crystal we make has the same number and performs exactly the same way. Well, I've seen your crystals, and they are exquisite. Yes. I've never seen anything else like them. And you ought to see the 14 sides now, the 13 side ones that we're making. I'd like to. I've seen the 8, I believe it is. The 8 now, then we went up to 13 and 14. Mm. Well, we're coming. I'd like to say to all of you who are listening at this time, go to a rock shop and... Pick up a handful of small, inexpensive crystals of all different varieties, shape, and form. Purchase them and get a book on geology, and it will fascinate you from beginning to end to realize a wonderful course of nature as she grows these crystals down to the ages. Gemstones have been grown by nature but we have this wonderful world of crystals, the amethyst, the jade, the quartz, and each of them have their own unique properties. And as you learn to study them and test them, you'll be able to discover these properties and enjoy them. It costs you only a few pennies to get these natural crystals, and they will teach you so much by just learning about them and feeling them and letting them teach you. I've done that with fluorescent minerals, the fluorescent rocks. I've done that with all the rocks I have here in and around me. The cutting I've made of crystals are for specific purposes, for scientific purposes. But I love a simple little crystal as much as a child. I've enjoyed being with all of you. I thank God for the gifts he has given me, and I've enjoyed the moments we have had together. Well, thank thank you. you. You're very welcome, Dr. Vogel. 
And we're looking forward to your 1,000-page book by Ballantine Publishers. Is it this spring? Uh, you know, it's going to be later on. I'm not sure it's going to be a 1,000 oh, pages. I could probably cut it down. Uh, but it's going to be out this year. It was, it was going to be out last year, but they put it ahead to this year now. But it's coming out this year now. We look well, forward to that. It's going to be fun. We look forward to having you again on our show. And thank you again for sending us all those crystals, which we will disseminate to the American audience over the next oh. couple of weeks. Tell them I enjoy them and have each of them has my love in it. Thank you very much, Dr. Vogel. Goodbye now and God bless you. God bless you. Bye-bye.